I'm Dr. Orion Taraban, and this is PsychAx Better Living Through Psychology. And the topic of today's short talk is the problem with self respect. Like anything under the sun, there is nothing that is completely positive. Everything is a trade off, everything is a mixture of positive and negative, of benefit and liability. Furthermore, everything comes with a cost, including values. In fact, that's one way to think about values. They're valuable, which is to say they're costly, they're expensive. And self-respect is no different. And I think this is really important because in today's day and age, we collectively seem to act as if there is no downside to self-respect. That is, not only is self-respect unilaterally a positive, but that it is a value all people should prioritize above all things. In fact, when people prioritize another goal above their self-respect, we tend to think that they must be weak or scared, damaged, or otherwise pitiable. And while there absolutely is a time to prioritize self-respect, it's probably less often than most people believe. Let me explain. Since I've already spoken on dialectical behavior therapy a few times on this channel, you know that I hold this treatment in very high regard. In the Interpersonal Effectiveness Module of DBT, Marsha Linehan talks about the three possible goals of any human interaction. Ideally, we achieve all three of these goals. However, like any ideal, this is actually extremely rare. In any case, even if we do achieve all three, we typically can't achieve all three equally, which suggests that we have to prioritize these goals in our dealings with others. And Linehan argues that to the extent that we do this skillfully and intentionally, which depends, among other things, on our ability to flexibly adapt to changing conditions, we are more likely to have satisfying relationships. As with many things pertaining to mental health, flexibility is key. If people just prioritize one of the goals all of the time, irrespective of the goal, this tends to lead to suboptimal outcomes. So, What are the three goals? They are objective effectiveness, which is getting what you want, relationship effectiveness, which is making sure that the other person feels good about you at the end of the interaction, and self-respect effectiveness, which is making sure that you feel good about yourself at the end of the interaction. Again, ideally, people get all three. People feel good about giving us what we want, and we feel good about getting it. However, in reality, this is not always the case. Depending on the situation, we sometimes need to prioritize one of the goals over the other two. And this obviously comes at a cost, namely the cost of the other two goals. To understand what that might look like, let's consider some extreme examples. Prioritizing objective effectiveness over relationship and self respect effectiveness could look something like, I don't care if you hate me. I don't care if you never speak to me again. And I don't care what I have to do to get it, but I will get it. I will beg, borrow, and steal to get it. I will perform any number of shameful, unholy acts to get it. I am prioritizing my goal above all other things. Okay? And there is a time and a place for that strategy. On the other hand, prioritizing relationship effectiveness over objective and self-respect effectiveness could look something like, I don't care if I don't get what I want. I don't care if my preferences or interests or desires are taken into account. I just want you to be happy. I just want you to get what you want. Even if that means that I have to perform any number of shameful and unholy things to ensure that goal. All right. And there is a time and a place for that strategy as well. And what happens when people prioritize self-respect effectiveness over objective and relationship effectiveness? This could look something like, you crossed a line that shouldn't have been crossed. At this point, I don't even care if I get what I want. And I certainly don't care if you hate me or never speak to me again. I'm prepared to hold this line and to pay any price and incur any expense in doing so to stand up for myself or to stand up for this value on principle. Make sense? And there's a time and a place for this strategy as well. At this point, however, 
The liabilities associated with unduly prioritizing self-respect effectiveness should be obvious. People who tend to prioritize self-respect above all other things tend not to get what they want and tend not to be in relationships. And this is expected because they sacrifice the other two goals, objective effectiveness, getting what they want, and relationship effectiveness, maintaining their relationships, in order to prioritize their self-respect. It should go without saying, but it can be very difficult to deal with people who tend to unduly prioritize self-respect over the other two as a habit. And this is due to the fact that these people, unfortunately, operate under the assumption that they can be difficult and contentious and self-focused, and other people will still happily give them what they want. And this, my friends, is insane. For better or worse, the cost of self-respect is the other two goals. The more a person insists on the one, the more he or she forgoes the others. Now, before I go any further, if you're liking what you're hearing, please consider sending this episode to someone who might benefit from its message, because it's word-of-mouth referrals like this that really help to make the channel grow. You can also hit the thanks button and tip me in proportion to the value you feel you've derived from this episode. I'm proud to announce that my book, The Value of Others, is now available in ebook, audiobook, and paperback formats. This book not only explains the game of modern dating, but it provides actionable advice on how to get and keep more of what you want in the sexual marketplace. I highly encourage you to check it out. I'm also writing original content for my free newsletter every week. If you'd like to sign up, you can do so on my website. Finally, please fill out an inquiry form on my website if you're interested in booking a paid consultation. The links to everything are in the description below. Please check them out because it's how you can support this channel and its mission. I really appreciate it. Okay, let's get back to it. I found that people who tend to prioritize self-respect effectiveness above the others also tend to have a rather expansive sense of self. And because of this, their egos tend to bruise easily and their pride is easily hurt. They seem to have a lower threshold with respect to what they perceive to be a slight or an insult or a disparagement. As a consequence, these folks end up fighting a lot of battles and dying on a lot of hills, which doesn't win them many friends and doesn't help them become successful. These people often end up alone and frustrated, which ironically causes them to prioritize self-respect even more because what else do they have? So it can be a vicious cycle. The fact of the matter is that in order to get what you want in life or to have satisfying, harmonious relationships with people, you can't always insist that how you are being treated is the most important thing in life. For example, objective effectiveness is often associated with learning how to play the game. If you want to climb the corporate ladder or further your career, you can't be standing up for yourself all the time, can you? Sometimes you have to go along with things that you disagree with. Sometimes you have to strategically cultivate relationships. You're not going to get there by just insisting that you deserve better. By the same token, if you want peaceful, loving relationships, you can't always be putting your own subjective experience front and center, can you? Sometimes you have to learn to shut the fuck up, to bite your tongue, to let things slide, and to give other people what they need and want. If you have no filter, if you are difficult and contentious, if you won't give other people what they need and want, then don't be surprised if people don't like you as much. Pride is cold company. Don't expect other people to love and respect you if you behave this way. Now, as I've already said, there is a time and a place to prioritize self-respect. However, this is typically when dealing with flagrant disrespect or some form of abuse or exploitation. Though the definition of all of these words has expanded significantly in the past few years, which is actually very problematic for a number of reasons, people shouldn't be dealing with these things on a regular basis. And this means that prioritizing self-respect shouldn't be a frequent occurrence. And if you do find yourself dealing with these things on a regular basis, 
you might better serve yourself by examining why you seem to end up in disrespectful, abusive, or exploitative relationships on a regular basis than by fighting yet another battle in an interminable succession of conflicts. Get out of the situation and do some self-reflection. Remember, prioritizing objective effectiveness or relational harmony over your self-respect doesn't necessarily make you weak or damaged or beta or whatever negative judgment you want to use. It might make you effective. However, like so many things in life, the trick is to cultivate the wisdom to know when to prioritize one goal over the others. What do you think? Does this fit with your own experience? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I appreciate your support and thank you for listening.